goal for today. Figure out what I need to do to put those on this. And I need your help. So my last video got a lot of dislikes and I apologize greatly if I steered anyone wrong with the description of what was expected. Um, I did put part one in the title because it was part one. First thing we did was we got the tires and that's the first part of how we want to set this up. So again, if you're just now watching, I picked up some Goodyear Wrangler MTRs in 305-70R17 and they're going on the 4Runner. Right now I'm running a Toy Tech 2 inch lift that got springs in the back and I have the TRD Pro suspension with the Toy Tech 2 inch lift up front. Let me show you that real quick. So you go, there's the springs in the back. I have a diff leak which kind of sucks. I wonder if I hit it on a rock. I need to fix that. Anyways, the Toy Tech 2 inch springs in the back, which have made the ride height look like this. And that's with Rubicon takeoffs. These are load range C tires, which I've already proved to be weak when I tore one of the beads. I'll show you that in a second. But they are 255-75-R17s. And then here's what I got going on up front. If I can get you in there well. So. I got the TRD Pro Bilsteins, which are phenomenal. I almost hate getting rid of these because they're so good. And then the Toy Tech, Toy Tech 2 inch lift up front, as you can see down there. Now what I'm curious on, and one thing I'll ask you guys is, should I try and get a spacer lift up here? I know spacer lift is like the worst thing and not what I want to do, but just for fitment wise, should I try and get a 2 inch, maybe 2 inch, I'm not sure, but a 2 inch spacer? That goes in between this. Again, I like these so much that I almost hate to get rid of them. But I can't make these any taller that I know of. When I put this on there with the winch, the war it's this is the worn winch bumper with the worn winch. It lowered my front another inch. So it looks like that. And that's kind of my stance at this point. Also, there's a quick view of the TRD Pro rear suspension that I have set up back there. Okay, so that's where I'm at. I was considering getting some FJ takeoff spare wheels because I like the black look of the spare tire. The steel look, it's a 17 inch, 7.5 inch wheel with 4.5 inch back spacing. I want a little bit more back spacing to help fit these a little bit wider tires. But I'm not sure I'm going to be able to pull that off. The, the weight's a little bit more, so I'm not sure how I want to do that just yet. So I'm thinking about just putting these on the stock wheels for now. Now again, my, my biggest thing is just fitment. I don't think I need to do anything in the rear, maybe do a bump stop. You guys let me know on that one. I'll probably do a bump stop, but I don't plan on adjusting any of the rear suspension. The front suspension, I need to go up two inches. I think right now I'm at probably a one inch lift over stock just because of the, the weight up front. So I need to go up, I need to, do a, I need to do a full three inch lift up front. I was considering doing the Dobinson extended reach three inch true lift. And that's right around 500 bucks if I don't get them to in, uh, put it together, which I don't want to pay for assembly because I can do that myself. So I'm looking for ideas. I do know I need to do upper control arms. What I'm hoping is if I do have to replace my front strut assembly, I can take off my TRD Pro suspension, sell that for like 400 bucks, or just trade it for upper control arms. So that's my goal with that. So I'm going to wait till I get those off and then swap out the upper control arms um, immediately afterwards. So right now I'm just trying to figure out what to do up front. Again, I know the cheapest option and not the best option is a spacer lift. Is that an, even an option though? Do they sell two inch ones of those? And that'll let me keep my TRD Pro front suspension. Not sure though, anybody doing that? I know I'll need to do the body mount chop and I'll need to trim up some fender stuff to make these fit and make them work. I know that. So to anybody who's saying this isn't gonna work and it's gonna rub and all that stuff, I'm, I'm not ignorant to that. I, I know we're gonna deal with some fitment stuff. So. Just trying to figure out the next move and really looking for advice on brands. I'd like to spend around 500 bucks for up front. I don't want to do Icon, Stage 5, all that hoo-ha and all that great stuff. Great stuff, but I like to operate, I like to wheel. And personally, I, I'm not going to gain, by spending thousands of dollars, I'm not going to gain the stretch and the, the extension and whatnot that I'm looking for. Obviously the ride quality would be hugely, vastly different but I'm not really much looking for that. I just look for off-road capabilities, fitment, getting some good tires under there, and being able to crawl around a bit more than where I'm at. So clearance and tires is, is my goal right now. Not 
phenomenal Baja 500 ride quality. So advice, I need some help guys. Like I said, I'm on a path right now where I think the Dobbinsons will work, but I haven't looked around enough and I haven't researched enough or got enough feedback from people actually doing stuff in that price range. So looking for some help. Also, let me, let me show you what I did with that other tire on the trail, that load range C tire. These are load range D, which is a bit thicker sidewall and it's gonna help out a lot. They got the Kevlar reinforced sidewalls, which is good compared to those. So many freaking spiders everywhere in this garage. Hey little guy, I don't know where he went. <laughs> if you watched our last off-roading video, you saw me tear a tire on the trail. And this is the damage of that. I don't know if you guys can see that very well. But see that hole right there? Tore the heck out of this tire. It is just, that sidewall was just done. I'm actually pretty impressed with that. Let me show you a little bit closer. It's actually pretty cool looking. Not cool looking when you're on the trail and you have to replace the tire, but cool looking in general. So yeah, that tire is uh, trash at this point, which sucks because it had really good tread still. Anyway, so I'm trying to go from these to the bigger 34, 35 inch size tires. Sticking with 34s because I've heard those fit a lot better. So that's where I'm at. I'm sorry I'm breaking these up into parts, so if I wasn't clear on that before, now you know a little bit better, so I wanna, I wanna show people exactly how this is done, not just toss them on and say, this is how you do it. Actually show some thought out research in this. Thank you guys for following us. We did start a new channel called Dynamically Free, where Shay is doing all of the editing on the videos, and it gives you a little bit more insight on our personal lives and just a bunch of different hobbies, versus this channel, which is gonna stick to more off-roading and four x four related builds. Whether we get another Jeep, or we work on the Forerunner, that's what we're focusing on this channel now. So check it out and uh we appreciate it thanks again guys it's so much easier to toss 35s on the jeep this takes a lot more thought and planning out does anybody need some tires by the way i have a ton of these hanging out if you need a spare bfg let me know because i got you seriously guys look at that that's his old carcass there's a bajillion of these guys running around the garage and for anyone into bikes, I just picked up a new Harley. Haven't had one of those ever. And we are gonna be doing a Kawasaki Z550 build. This is actually gonna be Shay's bike. So we're gonna get that running. She actually already knows how to ride, but that's gonna be on our channel dynamically free. Just a heads up if anybody's into that sort of thing as well. Our little uh, mailbox runner.